What's up, y'all? It's Nefertiti, the Corning Rainbow here, and today I have a sew along for you guys with my new Nomi Spring 2026 pattern. So on today's sew along, we're gonna be doing view C, which is the organza or contrasting dress. The instructions are the exact same for view B and for view C, but if you are choosing to use the organza, which in my opinion is a little bit more challenging if you have never used organza. Let's go over some of the suggested fabrics that you can use for this pattern. For view B and C, you can use batiks, uh, chambres, cotton blends, cotton lawns, jacquard, linen blends, which would be perfect for this uh, shirt dress. Um, shirting, you can also use georgettes, uh, novelty shears and organzas, which is what I'll be using today in organza fabric. I'm also using a satin for my contrasting fabric, so that should be really fun. But you can use any um, fabric that you choose, mix and match, have fun with this pattern. So um, the notions that you're going to need for this pattern are thread, you're going to need eight, five, five eighths of an inch buttons and also interfacing. So let's go ahead and get started. If you are sewing the organza or contrast view with me, we're gonna go over the pattern pieces that you're gonna need for your contrasting pieces. So you're gonna need pattern piece number five and you're gonna cut four of fabric. Pattern piece number nine, which is your lower front. And this is for view B and C. You're gonna cut two of fabric pattern piece number 10, which is your lower back, and you're gonna cut two of fabric. You're gonna need pattern piece number 12, which is your neck band. You're gonna cut one of interfacing and two of fabric. Pattern piece number 11, which is your front band, and you're gonna cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number 14, which is your sleeve band, and you're gonna cut two of fabric. All right, so for your main fabric, you're going to cut out pattern piece number six, which is your upper front. You're gonna cut out two of fabric. Pattern piece number seven, which is your upper back, you're gonna cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number eight, which is your upper side back, you're gonna cut two of fabric. And lastly, pattern piece number 13, which is your sleeve, you're gonna cut two of fabric. Make sure to transfer all your markings and your notches on each pattern piece. And let's go ahead and get started on the first step. You're gonna grab pattern piece number six and pattern piece number five. And you should have already um, reinforced the stitching here. And we're gonna trim right at that corner, making sure not to cut past the stitches. And we're going to match up one of our yoke pieces, and you should have a notch there as well. Match up those notches, and we're stitching this with right sides together. I'm gonna go ahead and trim right in that corner. And then you should be able to bring that piece around. Go ahead and pin. All right. So once you have everything pinned and you do want to make sure that you are pivoting at this corner here, then you can go ahead and trim the corner on your yoke. Let's go ahead and go to the machine and sew this up. I am starting on the edge where we're going to pivot and this might be a little bit hard for you to see but um, you can see that I've trimmed and we've spread open right at the corner. So we're going to pivot right at that needle there and I'm just going to follow along with my stitching lines that I've already sewn down at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And here's where you're gonna make sure that you pivot.
So your shirt front and yoke should look something like this. And we're gonna give everything a good press, turn it to the inside. Press your seams towards the inside of your yoke. And I've gone ahead and trimmed the, the corner here so that we can fold that down nicely. Trim the seam allowance down to uh, one fourth of an inch. Give everything a good press and we're going to attach the second yoke. All right, so I've gone ahead and pressed my seam towards my yoke, and we're gonna go ahead and trim everything down. I've grabbed another yoke, and what we're gonna do is we're going to press the seam allowance at 5 eighths of an inch in on our you have two notch sides, but the notch side where we're gonna be matching it up. And then you're gonna press in 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the bottom. And so I've gone ahead and pressed and also trimmed down the inside yoke piece. So I have the shirt turned to the inside. I'm just gonna place it on there to make sure that everything matches up and I'm going to pin at the corner and then also at the very top. If you're not using a sheer fabric, you can uh, slip stitch this yoke piece down and then you can flip it over and edge stitch but if you are using a sheer fabric like I am it's very easy to just pin everything from the right side that way you can actually see the folds matching up together All right, we have everything pinned. So from the right side of your top, you're going to edge stitch all the way around. Make sure you're pivoting at that corner. And if you like, you can do another row of top stitching. I'm gonna do a second row of top stitching because that's the look that I'm going for. So let's go ahead and head over to the machine. pivoting at that corner there. Right, so everything is top stitched. Now we're going to base stitch the yokes together and we're gonna match our notches.
right, so once you finish both pieces for your front and your yoke, we're gonna put this to the side for a second and we are gonna grab pattern piece number seven and pattern piece number eight. So on the wrong side of your upper back, we are going to pin wrong sides together our upper side pieces should have double notches Go ahead and stitch one fourth of an inch seam allowance with the wrong sides together because we are doing French seams. Then we're gonna give this a good press and we're going to do our second stitch, encasing the raw edge. All right, so I've gone ahead and attached both um, side upper back pieces to my upper back and we have the right side of the fa fabric facing up. So your raw edge of your seam allowance should be facing towards you. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to press our seams and we are going to fold the fabric with right sides together and we're going to encase that raw edge of stitching that we have there. So go ahead and give this a press and meet me back here. So I've given everything a good press. So again, with right sides of your um, upper uh, side and upper back pieces, we're gonna stitch and encase in that raw edge. So I'm just gonna pin because I don't want anything to move around. All right, so again, we have right sides together now. Go ahead and stitch that, press everything open, do that for both sides, and we're gonna move on to the next step. So we finished our French seams on the side, um, the side back pieces and the, the back piece. So now what we're going to do with wrong sides together, we're going to stitch our front pieces. Grab your front piece and make sure that you have wrong sides facing. And we are going to match at the shoulder seam and the side seam. So we're doing French seams for the shoulder and side seams as well. If French seams are not your jam, that's cool. You can stitch all seams on this pattern with right sides together and you can eliminate um, French seams if you like. Um, for the organza view, it's gonna give you the cleanest look. Um, and if you choose not to do French seams, you can then serge your raw edges or you can add bias tape to your raw edges. Whatever you like, have fun with it. So head on over to the machine, stitch your shoulder seams and your side seams for both front pieces and then come back. So I've gone ahead and sewn the sides and the shoulder seams together um, with French seams. And now we're going to put the shirt dress to the side for a second. And we are going to grab our lower back pieces. And with the three notched edge, we are going to stitch wrong sides together. I'm going to also sew this seam in the same manner that we have all of our other seams and French seams. Go ahead and stitch one fourth of an inch 
seam allowance trim down your seam if you need to open it back up give everything a nice press and then encase your raw edge the same way that we have sewn all of our other French seams we're doing the same thing for pattern piece number 10 go ahead and do that come back and we're going to move on to the next step so once you have done your French seam on your lower back we're going to grab our lower front piece and we're going to pin it wrong sides together same method we're doing French seams the dress is a high low so your front will come up higher than your back and again you should be matching up the notch go ahead and sew your French seams for both sides attach your other side all right so next we're going to hem the edge of our dress here on the lower front and the lower back go ahead and stitch one fourth of an inch and then press everything up and fold again and we should have five eighths of an inch all together for our hem give everything a good press and then we're going to attach this to our front and back all right so once you have hem the bottom of your lower front and lower back we're going to go ahead and attach this to the dress you should have a notch in the front and two notches in the back so and then you'll also match up your side seams with the dress so let's go ahead and pin everything wrong sides together all right go ahead and stitch at one fourth of an inch do your French seams and then press your seams toward your lower front and back all right so we've gone ahead and um, done our French seams on the lower bottom um, and we're gonna put this to the side for a second and we're gonna work on our um, neck bands and our placket go ahead and grab your front band um, or placket and you're going to go ahead and press the unnotched edge of your front band five eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance and then you're going to trim down, uh, trim it down to three eighths of an inch. All right, I've gone ahead and trimmed down uh, my seam allowance. So now with right sides together, we are going to fold at the fold line. And I went ahead and I marked where my fold line is. And we are only doing this on the bottom edge so you should have your notches on the top here you're only going to be straight stitching five eighths of an inch and then we're going to turn this out and give everything a good press all right so we've pressed and trimmed down our front band and you want to make sure that you are pressing it at the fold line and with your notched edge we're going to go ahead and match our notches with our shirt dress pin everything down you might just need to open that up just a little bit make sure that you're turning down your seam allowance on the inside all right so we're going to go ahead and go to the machine and we're going to stitch down on our notched edge at five eighths of an inch seam allowance make sure that you're not catching this folded edge here so just push that open and once you get to the end just make sure as well that you're not catching the folded edge
right? So once you have stitched that down, go ahead and trim down your seam allowance. Now we're going to fold our band. We're going to push our seam allowance towards the inside of the band. You may have to um, give this another press. Pin this down. And we're just going to base down the band right along the stay stitches from the neck edge of the shirt dress. All right, so go ahead and press everything towards the inside of your band and then we're going to pin down and you have two options you can either slip stitch your entire band or you can pin everything nicely and do top stitching um, again i'm going to be using top stitching because that's going to cut down time for me so um, go ahead and give everything a press a good press pin your folded edge just slightly over those current stitches here and then you can top stitch to your liking you can top stitch on both sides you can top, do an edge stitch only it's completely up to you whatever style you are going for for this shirt dress. I'm gonna go ahead and give everything a good press. All right, so I'm starting from the bottom and I actually changed my foot to an edge stitch foot to make um, these stitches more um, precise. If you don't have an edge stitch foot, that is fine, whatever methods you like to use for top stitching then go right ahead and do so all right this part gets really easy for you because you can actually see where the band is hitting just nicely. All right, so go ahead and give your front band a good press. We're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side of our shirt dress. Attach your band in the same manner, and then we're going to attach our neck band. All right, so you've attached your front bands on both sides, and I went ahead and stay stitched the neck edge of the dress. So we're gonna put this to the side for a second go ahead and grab your neck band and we're going to be using our interface neck band first so you should have interfaced one of your neck bands and i went ahead and uh, pressed under five eighths of an inch on the notched edge of the neck band you should have also transferred your marking so i'm going to go ahead and trim this down um, about three-eighths of an inch. All right. Then grab your um, neck band that is not interface and with right sides together, we are going to be stitching along the unnotched edge until we get to our 
dots here. So you should have a marking for where your buttonhole and then an, another marking for your button. But where these dots are, where we're going to be stitching, and then we're going to fold everything right side out, trim our seam allowance down, give everything a good press, and we're going to attach this to our um, neck of our dress. So I went ahead and understitched as far as possible on the interface side of my neckband. And now I'm going to give this a good press. I also went ahead and trimmed down the seam allowance. So we're going to fold this right side out. And we're going to be stitching down our uninterfaced uh, edge to our shirt dress. Grab your dress and we are going to pin with right sides together. You should have notches on your neckband. Go ahead and match those up first. You should also have a marking that's going to be your shoulder seam. So go ahead and match that up. You're going to match up your next shoulder seam. You should have a marking as well. All right, so go ahead and stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so once you have sewn your neckband on, now we're going to trim down seam allowance. So go ahead and fold your neck band down and we're doing this in the same manner that we did our front band. So right where your fold is, you're going to be pinning and you can choose to slip stitch this in place or you can go ahead and top stitch everything down. I am comfortable enough to um, edge stitch everything without slip stitching. Um, that's a preference. So if you're edge stitching, you want to make sure that you're edge stitching on the outside of your neckband, not from the inside. So even though I pinned everything on the inside, I'm going to actually be edge stitching on the outside. Um, and you're going to edge stitch all the way around the neckband. So go ahead and do that. And then we're going to move on to our sleeves. Okay, so the neckband is complete and I've gone ahead and um, did my top stitching or edge stitching. Um, you can also do edge stitching on the other side of your front band. I'm going to do that just before I attach my buttons. So what we're going to do next is work on our sleeves. You're going to grab your sleeve and your sleeve band. You should have two notches or not one notch on each side. Go ahead and pin. You're going to stitch your sleeve band at 5 eighths of an inch. And for our sleeve, we are going against the instructions, but if you like, you can follow along with the pattern instructions, which um, just has you stitching it at five eighths of an inch on the seam allowance with right sides together. I, I'm using the organza and I prefer to continue the remaining um, portion of the sleeves with the French seams. That can be a little bit challenging when you're going around the uh, curves of the sleeves, but 
I feel like it is a cleaner look, especially if you're using a sheer fabric. Um, so I am going to pin my sleeves in the same manner that we would if we, for our other uh, French scenes with wrong sides together. Go ahead and stitch um, your French seam on your inseam of your sleeve and um, you're going to stitch with right sides together for your sleeve band. Okay, so you have your sleeve and you have your sleeve band. I've gone ahead and pressed the unnotched edge of our sleeve band up five eighths of an inch. And I'm going to trim that down So I've trimmed it down and I've done my French seam on my sleeve. So I'm going to turn the sleeve right side out. I'm going to put the sleeve band on matching up my seams first. And you should have a notch that you're going to match up as well. Go ahead and stitch your sleeve band to your sleeve at 5 eighths of an inch and give everything a good press forward. Then we're going to fold on our fold line our sleeve band and we're going to edge stitch or slip stitch. The same method that we use for our front band we're going to use for our sleeve band as well. Alright, so I've given my sleeve band a good press. So now with, because I'm doing French seams on my um, sleeves as well, that is optional, but this is something that I prefer to do. I am going to be sewing wrong sides together and I'm still matching my notches. So go ahead and pin. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish my sleeve off with a French seam. If you are not using that method, you're gonna pin your sleeve to your armhole and you're gonna match up your dots and you're gonna stitch at five eighths of an inch with right sides together. And then you're gonna make another stitch at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then you're gonna trim or serge your raw edges. So go ahead and do that and come back and all that we'll have left are our buttonholes and buttons. All right, we have attached our sleeves and the last thing that you have left to do is add your buttonholes to your right front band and your buttons to your left front band and we are all done. All right, y'all, we are all done. You should have completed view B or C of my Nomi 2026 pattern. If you are also sewing view A, there is a sew along for that as well, which is my tank dress. Go ahead and check out that video as well. We would love to see what you created. Please tag at the corny rainbow and at Nomi patterns. Until next time, peace.